Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Psalms 27 verses 13. We're all going to read, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of The Bible says I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And the next verse says wait on the Lord. He says, be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. He says, wait, I say, on the Lord. Tell your neighbor, wait on the Lord. Turn to your neighbor. Tell him, don't faint. Don't faint. Don't faint. Wait on the Lord. 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 Don't give up. Don't give in yet. Don't throw in the towel. Come on, don't write it off. Don't put the story behind. Don't shut the project yet. Don't. Hey, wait. The Bible says, wait on the Lord. Be of courage. Somebody shout, Amen. What is the reason for the sermon tonight? Human history has had accounts upon accounts, stories upon stories, experiences upon experiences of men and women who went through too much that they one time woke up and it's almost as though they were at wit's end. If you have not been there, one day you will. Somebody shout hallelujah. One day you will wake up and something around you will make you feel like you are at the end. You understand what I'm saying? Because it happens to human beings. Beyond time in memory to present day. And if I was to get every individual here and we ask you to narrate a story of yourself, one event and account of your life, I am certain there was a time in life when you almost thought it was over. You understand what I'm saying? And things can happen, and to some it's so bad that they almost go to a place of even losing their own life. Sammy was a career. Sammy was a relationship. Sammy was a business. For many aspects we can never know. Sammy was health. For Sammy was a sole issue. But you can wake up one day and you've reached the end of all your mind can apply. You've reached the end of all your resources can apply. You've reached the end of all science can give you, biology can give you, human friends can give you, networks can give you, education can give you, any institution can give you, you can get to the end of it all. Some people think money is everything. You can have it all and still get to a point where even with all the money that you have, there's nothing you can do. Some of you know of the co-founder of Apple, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs was diagnosed with cancer. He was among the richest men the world had ever seen. With all the doctors available, 
with all the medicines available, with all the counselors available, with all the psychologists available, with all the drugs available, with all the comforts available, with all the amenities available, he succumbed to death and there was nothing he could do even with the wealth that he had in his own hands. Because we do not put our faith in the elements that are seen. Somebody shout hallelujah. If he knew a certain God, a certain way, he could have saved maybe his life. You understand what I'm saying? He could have. He could have. So, sometimes the things that we get to one time in a meeting, I got a word of knowledge and called some people and I said, there are two people here who are going to commit suicide. And I prayed for a woman who came and she told me that I was raped and my husband left me and I was thrown out of the house, looked for jobs, failed. I started starving with my child on the street and I thought the next best thing was to just go buy poison and eat it with my daughter so we die because we were rejected by everyone we knew. And so as she was walking Nakawa Road up there, she had people praying and she said, you know what, let me just go and sit there. And that was the death that gave her life. But I can tell you that there are many people who have gotten to it and who have gotten to the end of it all and you almost were forced to faint. It's not you only. You're not the only one with a story. There are many people in the world with similar stories. Go back to the Bible in biblical history. Elijah is a man of God. He's called of God. He's anointed of God. He loves the Lord. He has killed Baal prophets. He has, you know, stopped rains and he's changed clouds, he's done every sort of miracle and everybody knows that has come in contact with this man that he's a man of God. But then one day I have tells the people around her that I'm not going to sleep until I have the head of a light. And we see the man of God running like any other normal man. And the story tells us the man ran and hid in a cave. Elijah thought and knew for a moment that that was the end of his story. And God finds him in a cave. He doesn't sympathize. He asks Elijah, what are you doing here? Because according to the mind of God, the story was not over. The testimony was not done. But Elijah felt as though he had come to the end of all understanding and wisdom. And God tells this guy, look, eh, I know you're here, but there's a lot to do. You have to anoint Jehu. You must anoint Elisha. You must do this and do that. God starts to show this man that much as you are worried about these present day things that are happening, the plans that I have toward your life are way bigger than this point that causes you to think that you're going to fail. Somebody shout hallelujah. David. You remember the story of David and Saul? He served. He's delivered the Philistine in the hands of Saul. And one day, the same man wants to kill him. The Bible says that the anger of Saul on David was so big that one time he threw a spear to his own son, Jonathan. He almost killed him because of the wrath he had toward David. He almost killed his own son out of wrath because of the hatred he had toward David. But 1 Samuel 16, the Bible says the Lord had anointed David as king. God has poured oil on you and he has told you you are the king of Israel. I assure you. And then one day you wake up running away and hiding in a cave. Was it of Abdullam? He's hidden in a cave. But he is the man with the anointing to change the history of Israel. It's true the anointing of God is in his life. But tragedy has befallen him and the hatred of his king is after his head. 
And for a moment, David thinks they might kill him. Ladies and gentlemen, these things happen. If you read the story of David, you realize, in fact, the whole of his life, there was a sort of characterization of frustration that almost would tell you that this was the end of his life. The day he killed Uriah and took over Bathsheba, David thought, after understanding his wrong, David thought he was going to die. He knew he was going to die. He knew he had come to his end. God is done with me. But his mercy came through. As he grows older, his son Adonijah gets the king's son, David's son, takes them and all of them follow them except one fellow called Solomon. And they are going to ordain him as king even while David is still alive. Praise God. You've seen experiences where one day he wakes up weeping and he goes through the valley too. And Absalom wants the man out. And the very son, his own flesh and blood, his own seed, tomorrow gets Israel against David. And the Bible says, and Absalom won the hearts of Israel. And the whole nation gunned against David and went with Absalom. And we see him packing his bags. I can imagine him with his wives and the servants and the men that saw God use him. And the people who are observing from a side and saying, huh, this time the anointing has departed. This is the end of David. In fact, that story, if it was not for God, would have read that when Absalom got rid of David, that was the end we ever had, and he died in exile, and Absalom reigned supreme in, in the kingdom of Israel. But even when David is in exile, of his own kingdom and by his own son, and by a people he fought and shed blood for, he still believed to see the goodness of God in the land of living. That is hope. That ever fixed mark in your spirit that regardless of how long this has delayed, regardless of what has happened in my life, regardless of the things that have not worked, regardless of the things that have not, you know, come to fruition, regardless of the things that I have not realized, regardless of the things that I have not conceptualized, regardless of the things that have not come to fulfillment, even though they were spoken by God or a prophet, regardless of the testations that have come, and meanwhile I still insisted and submitted myself to the commitment of believing God, and still these things have not come. The man still stays fixed with a mark in his heart that I will still believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That is the spirit of hope. Now, I want to talk about it because, you see, I have lived long enough to see people give up and give in so easily. So easily. Somebody is sick, they're taken to the hospital, and then you go to pray with them and say, let's believe God for your healing. They lay hands on them, they start praying, Father, we cast out this, da 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 So do you believe in healing? Yes, I believe I'm healed. You understand? I healed, I receive it faster. And when you go out, they call for a lawyer and they start writing their will. You understand what I'm saying? They start writing their will. Is it wise to write a will? In the wisdom of men, yes, if you know that you're going to die immediately. Or if you suspect that you can die any time. One time a certain guy sat me down and said, You know, Apostle, do you have a will? <laughs> he asked me, Do you, Apostle Grace, do you have a will? Ask them why. You know, my friend died the other day, and then I know a guy who also died the other day, and you know, if you don't have a will, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> ask him, What made you think I can die any time? If you at the sound of my voice put your hand on your head and say, I cannot die any time. No, I die at the appointed time. And God can't take me without telling me. Somebody shout amen. Glory to God. I'm a man of God. But what of those who died? I don't know why they died. Are you hearing me? Don't put my story with those who what? Who died. Praise God. 
No. He will tell you the day you're going home. Are you hearing me? He will tell you. He will tell you. He will tell you. And tell you, you know what? This time you're going home. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I've read of men who told me, no, 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 no. By next year I'll be gone. Not because I'm sick, but God is done. Are you hearing me? Praise God. And that's the testimony. If you're here and for you, you think you can die anytime, you're in the wrong faith. Listen, he has numbered the days of your life. There is nothing that is speaking in his hand. Are you hearing me? The Bible says, death, where is thine sting? Where is thine victory? Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus abides faithful. He has told you, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans, plans, plans to make you prosper and not to harm you. To give you that expected end. In other words, your end has an expectation. There is a way you should go. Refuse to die like the world dies. I say refuse to die like the world dies. He says life and death are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the good of it. He says life and death are in the power. In other words, the power that controls your life and death is the word. The tongue. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout amen. And my tongue every morning says, uh -uh, with long life he will satisfy me. Somebody shout hallelujah. And I will see his goodness. The Bible says, and the days of your life I shall make full. Hallelujah. He says, you shall serve the Lord your God. He says, and I shall bless thy bread and thy water. And he says, and I shall take sickness from the midst of thee. Because we are servants of the Most High God. We refuse to die. There are those things of accidents. Refuse them in the mighty name of Jesus. Those are not yours in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says that a prudent man foreseeth evil, but the simple, they pass on it and they are punished. I refuse to be simple. I receive the prudence of the Spirit because I'm a child of God. He has been made my wisdom, my redemption, and my sanctification. I plan to live long. If you believe it, shout amen. So he asked me, have you written a will? I told him, look, not now. I know when to, not now though. You understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? A lady one time called me, and she told me she had stage four. She was in another country. And I was due to visit that country. And when they called me, they said, you know, we're not sure that by the time you even come, she might be what? Alive. So I said, let me talk to her on phone. I started the conversation like this. I said, I've had the issue you're dealing with. But when I come and we meet, because in my head, I refused to think that she would die before I got to her. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. And that's how it was. That is how it was. You refuse it. You simply refuse it. You just say no to it. How? Just like that, you say no. Somebody shout amen. Because we believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I am believing for good regardless of how bad things have been. I'm still believing for good. So I've seen people give up so quickly. And then you see text messages, oh, you know what, Pastor? I think this is not my job. I don't know, no, I think it wasn't my chance. I think this is not my time to go and study. I think God wants me to wait for another two or three. I, I think this is not for me. Why then do you have the desires you have if they're not for you? Hello? He said that I shall give you the desires of your heart. I was sharing with a few ministers this last week and I told them, take heed of the things that invite you. In human life, there are things that will never invite you and they will never catch your attention and tickle your fancy. That's okay. But when something invites you, take heed when something invites you. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. I'll give you an example. Paul was preaching the gospel. And the Bible says, and in a dream, he saw a man in Macedonia calling him, saying, come. And the Bible says, when he saw that in a vision at night, a man tell him, come in Macedonia and help us. Paul says, immediately I knew that I was supposed to go and preach the gospel unto them. And of the churches written of in scripture, Paul testifies of the church in Macedonia and he says no other church communicated to us like the brethren of Macedonia. Not even the Philippians that were givers. For the Bible says for their poverty abounded to their liberality. For they gave beyond than we expected. They sold all their stuff and gave in for the furtherance of the gospel. And the Bible says and they gave themselves unto God firstly and unto us by his grace they were the biggest giver they gave themselves unto god and the bible says and they started not only giving their substance but giving themselves over to the apostolic authority of paul that they might serve god unwaveringly he says no man ever communicated why is it that the church that communicated to paul most that served god most that gave most that yielded most itself to paul was the thing that invited him Take heed of the things that invite you. Somebody shout hallelujah. There's a reason why you have that dream. There's a reason why you feel you need to leave the country. There's a reason why you want to live in that place. There's a reason why you want to do that business. There's a reason why you want to establish that career. There's a reason why you want to undergo that process. Not all of us have the same desires. There's a reason why certain things invite you. The gospel invited me. I found myself on the altar preaching. This is my forte. It's my niche. It's the thing on my life because it's what invited me. When I was sleeping at night in my bed without anything, I would see myself holding the Bible, preaching the gospel in multitudes, in stadiums, on flat grounds, people were falling under the power, the lame were walking, the blind were seeing, the deaf were hearing. Why? It was my destiny. Things invited me. I never invited myself. Somebody shout hallelujah. Joseph was a normal boy, born in a house like a normal boy went to sleep like any other normal boy as he was in the bed he starts to see certain things are you hearing me moons and stars and the sun were bowing to him are you hearing me he wakes up in the morning and tells his father i had a dream the sun the moon and the stars were bowing to me 11 stars the father asked him hey are you saying that you want to take over us i am not saying something is inviting me If you're a pastor here, and for you, you feel that by pastoring 20 members, your invitation is full. That is okay. But there is a man every time he closes his eyes, he sees nations, he sees continents, he sees millions, he sees multitudes upon multitudes. Take heed of the things that invite you. That is why I'm attracted to people who are invited by the same thing that invited me. Oh, they provoke my faith. They move my hope. They establish my understanding. They refresh my soul. Why? Because we communicate in a language they only can understand. Ask your neighbor what invites you. Somebody said hallelujah. And sometimes we start paying prices for the things that invite us. Okay? Joseph wakes up in the morning. He did not say. But the father said, are you saying? Are you hearing me? He's in a pit. Why? Because the boy had a dream. He didn't invite it. Tell your neighbor, sit in a choice. Do you understand what I'm saying? He did not invite it. It just came. I also don't know why I'm doing the job I am doing. I don't know why in my time I had to meet the men I met, the people I met. I entered the jobs that I entered in. Many of the things invited me. 
he's in prison for stuff that invited him somebody said hallelujah he's interpreting dreams because something invited him he invited him jesus is an invitation somebody said hallelujah he invited him he invited him so some of us he's beyond we can't help even when we said let me look away the thing just stayed telling you but this is who you are this is who you are are you hearing me you sit in a taxi and look at everybody something tells you inside you're different <laughs> you sit in a classroom you enter a business you understand you are somewhere at work you understand at my workplace i would sit on the table are you hearing me and something walks from the crown of my foot and starts moving like it's electricity and, and i find myself vibrating and it tells me great even though you're in the bank you are different there's something on you and before you know it they put a fish before you and you don't want to eat are you hearing me and the rest are eating and you ask yourself why is it that i no longer have an appetite there's something inside you telling you you are different while they are eating this is not your time to eat praise god while they go out spending time you are investing it you're reading and burning the midnight oil you're speaking in tongues until the cows back home why because something different is inviting you we are on border borders we are walking at night are you hearing me we're visiting prisons going to hospitals eating with the poor why because necessity is laid on us on the things that have invited us why you why are you the one feeling it why are you the one feeling it you understand why do others take it as a privilege but you feel its responsibility why you because it's inviting you it's inviting you it's inviting you Saul did not wake up to be king he was looking for lost animals but there was something inviting when David walked out that day he was not planning to be king he was taking food to his brother but an opportunity invited him let me tell you when god has ordained you for something it does not matter how long you're hidden it does not matter who knows you it does not matter who doesn't know you it doesn't matter who approves you it does not matter who does not approve you when god has invited no man can cancel no man no man no man no man hallelujah and he tells you all things work together for good to them that love the lord and are called according to his purpose tell your neighbor i was invited some of you are invited to fanero <laughs> glory to god glory to god Somebody shout amen. amen. Shout amen. amen. Next thing we know, the man is in prison. And Psalms 105, verse 17 says, He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they had with fetters, and he was laid in iron until the time of his word came. For the word of the Lord was trying a man who did not call it but he had to fulfill it because God in him had set destiny for the preservation of the posterity of Israel and he was raised under a heathen king as royalty because he's invited somebody shout hallelujah he'd invited he'd invited he'd invited he went as a servant imprisoned 
Praise God. Like any other man. But how he got into governor was what was upon his life. That is why I tell people, don't faint. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't draw out. Just don't give in. Don't throw in the towel. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1. Wherefore seeing we also have compassed, are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. The Amplified says, who have borne testimony to the truth. Do you know what that means? He's talking about everybody who can testify of the truth. Both those that are alive now and have seen the goodness of God and those that are in the heavenlies but look down on us. Apostle Paul, Peter, you understand, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, you understand, Isaiah, they are all looking at you. They're like, mm hmm, what you going to do? Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says, let us strip off, throw aside every encumbrance, unnecessary weight, and that sin which so readily, defeatly, and cleverly clings to and entangles us, and let us run with patient endurance and steady, active persistence the appointed course of the rest that is set before us. Looking away, the Bible says, from all that will distract. Are you hearing me? If something comes on your way when your course is clear, the Bible says, looking away from all. He didn't say attending to it. He didn't even say praying about it. No. He said looking away. He said from all that will distract you. If something comes, just look away. Sometimes people persecute us and I just look away. Are you hearing me? Because I'm on a course, they're spectating. I'm running the race, they're watching. So imagine if I stop and also start attending to them, you, why are you looking at me running? There's a reason why they are looking at me. <laughs> Glory to God! Tell your neighbor, keep running, keep running! Let those who watch, watch! Let those who talk, talk! But keep watch! Saraba Katalaba I'm a runner, not a spectator of God's work. Karaba Talaba Yerebos Somebody shout amen. He says, looking away from all that will work, distract. And he tells you to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, giving the first instance for our belief, and is also its finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. Did you hear that? He is the incentive of our belief and also the finisher, bringing it to maturity or perfection. In other words, I began this tea calling. I brought this invitation in you. And because I brought this invitation in you, I will finish the invitation with the event that I called it for. Somebody shout hallelujah. He says, for he, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, the Bible says, endure the cross. But he also got to one point and things started shaking him. He goes with three guys which were the pillars, James, Peter and John, and tells them, tarry here and pray. And we see the Son of God, who knew all this a while, and is in the Garden of Gethsemane, sweating blood, telling God, if it be possible, take this cup of suffering. That was Jesus' most notable moment of weakness. The Son of God, who was a hundred percent God. He also got to a point and said, God, if it be possible, are you hearing me? Take this thing away. But if it be your will, this one we are going through. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. And the Bible says, he for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him. The Bible says, endured the cross. For the joy of the prize that was set before him, endured the cross. You see what I'm saying? You go through this stuff because you see see the joy that is going to come after. That is what we are talking about. We are saying that regardless of how things are appearing, look at that thing ahead beyond this thing and start laughing. Eh? I know it is very hard for you to laugh at your situation because some of you are short-sighted. May God give you some glasses. Are you hearing me? May he put laser in your eyes. To see that there is life beyond the most complicated circumstance. If you only believe. He says, I had fainted. If I had not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. 
The Bible says he endured the cross, despising and ignoring the same. Despising and ignoring the same. Despising and ignoring the shame. Despising and ignoring the shame. Do you understand what I'm saying? Despise that situation. Ignore it. Praise God. And then somebody tells you, you know what, I'm not going to church. Why? I don't have a dress to... What? Put on the same dress. Praise God. Come back with the same shoe. If people are speaking, you know the same. Praise God. You know what you want. Because if you're faint in your day of adversity, it says your strength is small. You just act like nothing is happening. Oh, that sister, she always carries the same bag. So what? Did you shed your blood for her? Do you know her destiny? Do you know that by next year, you could be asking for a job? From the same woman. Tell your neighbor we come from far. The Bible says he despised and ignored the same. And the Bible says, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. <laughs> Somebody said, hallelujah. And the Bible says in verse 3, just think of him who endured from sinners such grievous opposition. Somebody said, hallelujah. And bitter hostility against himself. He says, recon up and consider it all in comparison with your trials, so that you may not grow weary or exhausted, losing heart and relaxing and fainting in your mind. That means when you go through whatever you go through, think of what the man who died for your sins went through. Your issues will seem smaller. Somebody saw the amen. Shout glory to God. You can serve God and pray and hope and believe and do everything, but then things are just not connected. Yes, but God, why? I have prayed, I have believed, I have given, I have sowed seed, I have done this. And then somebody says, you know what? I gave up on that thing. Ah! Somebody said, hallelujah. How do you draw back? In Galatians chapter 6 verses 9, he says, And let us not be weary in well-doing. He says, For in due season we shall reap coma if, 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 faint not. That means Satan works to faint you because he knows you're not denied. Did you hear what I just said? Satan works to faint you because he knows you cannot be denied. So he tries to frustrate everything around you. He starts to frustrate the things that are surrounding your life. Are you hearing me? And then he tells you, oh, this, I think this is that. Listen. We preach it in the rain. We preach it after the rain. We preach it when the sun is up. We preach it when the sun is not up. We preach it when it is feasible. We preach it when it's not feasible. We preach it when it's okay. We preach it when it's not okay. We preach it in the season. We preach it when it's out of season. We preach it in the heat. We preach it in the cold. Because we know who we are. But he has said, for in due season we shall reap, comma, if we do not faint. Do you know how many people gave up eh? when they were? You said it. When they were just, it was just two minutes. It was just two minutes. It was just two minutes. It was just three seconds. Are you hearing me? The devil was communicating, telling guys, you know what, I think we have to leave this guy. Conclude and come back. You understand? And the chap just gave in. Do you know why I never give up? Because every time I tell myself I'm closer to the miracle than I first believed, I always tell myself that. Every time something happens, I always tell myself I'm closer to the miracle than I first believed. Believed. That 
is the attitude. So what if things have not gone the right way? He says, be strong. Therefore, and let not your hands be weak and slack, for your works shall be rewarded. Second Chronicles 15, 7. He says, be strong. Do not slack. He says, for your work shall be what? Rewarded. You might do things and you don't see results. Yes, yes, continue. Oh, I prayed, Apostle. There is nothing I've not done. And I've done this and that. But then it has failed. Yeah, keep the attitude. Stay alive. Stay charged. Are you hearing me? Let men find you even after five years of trying. And you're stronger than the first time they found you. That's why the Message Bible says we increase in the waiting. He says we increase in the waiting. Romans 8, 24. He says that is why waiting does not diminish. Tell your neighbor, waiting doesn't diminish me. He says any more than waiting diminishes a pregnant mother. He says we are enlarged in the waiting. Somebody say amen. And he says, and we, of course, don't see what is enlarging us, but we are enlarged. He says, the longer we wait, the larger we become. And the more joyful our expectancy. It's amazing to find a woman who has believed God for children for 10 years. And you find her and she's happier than five years ago. Because she's enlarging. Rejoice ye you are barren woman. Seeing for the children of the barren shall be greater than he that brought forth children. We are enlarged in the waiting. In other words, whether it wants or it doesn't want, it will come bigger. That's what I believe. How many of you have heard of the founder of WhatsApp? How many of you read the story of that guy? I think his name is Brian Acton. Now this fellow worked with Apple before. He worked with Yahoo before. And then he got tired of routine and then quit and then went with his friend. I think it was John Combe and then they went. I don't know whether it was Asia or whatever. And then they spent some time back there. And then they came back to America. And then he sought employment from Twitter. And then Twitter denied him. And then he typed on Twitter. He said, well, I tried Twitter. He denied me. But whatever, it was fine. Something should come up, right? Then he applied at Facebook. Facebook turned him down. And when Facebook turned him down, he went on Facebook and said, I applied to Facebook. And Facebook denied me. And he said, and I'm now looking forward to life's greatest expectation. He said, I was denied. Yeah, Facebook denied me. But I'm looking now forward at the expanse of life and what it's going to offer me. He was a joyfully expectant. After denial, Sharp events worked up with his friend. It builds and it was bought for a whooping $22 billion by the same folk who refused to hire him. Thank God! Somebody shout hallelujah! Thank God that they turned you down. God is going to do better. I had fainted. If I had not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He built WhatsApp. Now it's probably more than five billion dollars rich. He didn't even need to work for anybody. Some of you there were things that deny you. You know you have to get to a point where she can even type you and tell you, I want nothing to do with you, Joseph. And you just get your hand up and just... I 
wish they knew. <laughs> All things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. Everything works for good. You have to believe for good. Somebody said amen. Those who walked and out on you, it's okay. If they denied you the job, that is still what? Get the attitude right. Some of you, I failed to get a job. You get a rope and then you put it in your neck. I'm going to, why? I, they denied me a job. <laughs> you just go back and say, Rabba Katalaba. Something bigger is coming. I'm overqualified. I'm rested in God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which I dare to think or ask according to the working power that worketh in me. To Guamu! Just brush it on and move on. That's the attitude. Praise God. When a man has an unwavering expectation of goodness to come, that man will always land in the stars. Always. 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 Moses is dead on the mountain. Israel is mourning. Everybody <laughs> We've lost the man who saw God for us. We've lost the man who gave us the law. We've lost the man to whom God led. We've lost the man with whom manna came. We've lost the man who directed the nation. Oh, our nation is in trouble. And then God comes in Joshua 1 9 with a very stern attitude. As though he says, okay, yeah, 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 so what? He says, have I not commanded? This is not even a request, Bambi. Try, don't be sad. No, Israel was wailing, oh, and then goes, hey, hey! He says, "Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, with us, so ever thou goest. I have not left you. Moses has died. I have not left you. Somebody shout, Amen. Glory to God." And Joshua strengthened himself out. And they crossed. They did. Moral of the story. You must make it. You have to make it. It has to come. Ten years, five years, three, it's up to you. But it must come. That is why I don't understand when somebody says, I listened to the word, but for me it did not work for me. How? How? And some of you are still so young. Praise God. There are many people here who still what? So now some of you who are 22. <laughs> 17. And then you find a 25 year old saying, you know what, I've given up. <laughs> you still have many years. To prove the goodness of God. Somebody shout amen. Shout amen. And probably there are 70 year olds here too. Who still what? Don't draw back. Don't draw back. Don't draw back. Don't draw back. You have to believe to see God. Praise God. I don't care how long this is going to take. But you will see God. You will see God. You will see God. You will see God. Will see God. Don't ever let anyone talk you down. Don't ever let anyone talk you down in what God has to do on your life. Somebody shout Amen. I want you to raise your voice and speak to God. Just speak to God. Speak to God.
when mountains fall, I'll stand by the power of your hand and in your heart. I'll wait and my soul. Whatever has been delayed, I want you to just raise your voice and tell God, I'm joyful more than I have ever been. I'm expectant more than I have ever been. I believe more than I have ever been. I yield more than I have ever been. I am on faith more than I have ever believed. I am filled with hope more than I've ever hoped. I'm charged more than I've ever been charged. I'm expectant more than I've ever expected. Come on, talk to God. Talk to God. When the mountains fall, that is why you're still alive. I'll stand by the power of your hand and in your heart. Oh, turn away that my soul. And now we know that you, 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 you. 
bring it. whatever looks like it's not moving and we decree that let it move let it move this week is going to smile on you the coming month is going to be smiling at you the end of the year is going to be beautiful and God is going to multiply the glory upon your life more than you have had these previous months oh! somebody shout hallelujah it is shining brighter than they has before. Men are going to look for you. People are going to seek you. The things that have invited you are going to respond in the mighty name of Jesus. Nations are going to set to your favor the skills of life to your advantage in the mighty name of Jesus. Your coming years are good. Your marriage is good. Your children are good. Your health is good. Your finances are good. Your going in is good. Your coming out is good. Your dwelling is good. Your meditation is good. Your prayer is good. Your ministry is good. Your children are good. Your thoughts are good. Your meditations are good. Your heart thoughts are good. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your ways are good. They are pleasing to the Lord. Favor is yours. More and more favor. Glory upon glory. Grace upon grace. You will not fail. You can't fail. When economies are going down, you will go up. When there's a casting down, they'll be rising up for you. In the name of Jesus, the ears of men are taken to you. The media of this world is kind to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, institutions, they need you. In Jesus' mighty name, you are anointed. You are highly favored. You are glorified. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above that which you dare to ask of me. According to the working power that works in you mightily. Somebody... Listen, if you ever feel like giving up, always remember, there are people who have believed longer than you, and they have seen God. Praise God. So how can you give up? There is always somebody older than you, 
who believes longer than you and has seen God more than you. Let's believe God. Good days are ahead of me. Good days are ahead of me. Thank you, Lord. Wealth is yours. Peace is yours. I also in a special way want to pray for people who have had things that have stuck for so long that you say I have had this thing for so long I am tired I feel there is a grace that is releasing you this evening you are going to go back home and it has changed. It has changed. It has changed. And in a special way, I also want to say, some of you, the world is opening up to you. The power of God is here. The power of God is here. The power of God is here. The world is opening up to you. You're going to become a global icon sooner than you expected. In every nation, a man will know your name and who you are. Receive it. Receive it. Nations are opening. They are opening. And you will enter them in glory. You will enter them in power. You will enter them with influence. You will not go as slaves. In the mighty name of Jesus. The world had to notice you. The world had to know you. Come on, receive it. Receive it. It's yours. 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 Thank you, Lord. Nations will respond to you. You will not go as slaves. You will go as king. You will go as king. Somebody clap your hands to Jesus. Clap. Televisions will play you. Radio stations will play you. Thank you, Lord. Newspapers will write about you in a good way. International stations, television stations, CNN, BBC, they will speak your name because of the God you have believed. Clap your hands to Jesus. Hey. Come on, clap your hands to him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me tell you. God can put you at a place where men will look for you. And may they look for you this year than you have ever been looked for. And next year it's going to be worse. In every problem there is, you will be the solution. In Jesus' mighty name, give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, He loves you. There is no greater gift to receive than the name. The Bible says there is no name by which men are saved except the name of Jesus. So if you're out there, you're going to repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for today. I have heard the gospel. My heart is here. I give you my life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I'm born again. Amen. God bless you.
The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose 4 from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.